The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 8 News Now or Nexstar Media Group. 90% of the public was with us on this. They wanted it to go back to a restricted, certain restricted times. Tonight on Politics Now, Las Vegas Councilman Stavros Anthony is running for the county commission. One of his big issues, the valley's traffic and how to make it better. I'm Alexandra Limon in Washington. Coming up, I'll have details on the whistleblower's report about President Trump and the hearing about it on Capitol Hill. No one particular law, though, is going to address and, and mitigate uh, people, like I said, carrying out those heinous acts. And Congressional District 4 Republican candidate Charles Navarro talks about the Second Amendment, gun policy, and his favorite policies from Donald Trump. From 8 News Now, this is Politics Now with Steve Sebelius. A whistleblower's complaint against President Trump was publicly released this week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Sebelius. It was released the same day as the acting director of national intelligence testified before Congress about how the report was handled. Our Washington correspondent, Alexander Limon, has all the details. A whistleblower complaint says President Trump asked Ukraine to interfere in the 2020 presidential election and to get dirt on Joe Biden, while at the same time the president was withholding U.S. military aid to Ukraine. I am not partisan and I am not political. Acting Director of National Intelligence Joseph McGuire said it's unprecedented to have such a complaint against the president. Adam Schiff represents California and is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. You went to the subject of the complaint for advice first about whether you should provide the complaint to Congress. It did appear that it has executive privilege. McGuire said while the complaint didn't initially go to Congress, it was sent to the FBI for further investigation. Utah Congressman Chris Stewart defended McGuire. And I will say to my colleagues sitting here, I think you're nuts. If you think you're going to convince the American people that your cause is just by attacking this man. McGuire told lawmakers he does not know who the whistleblower is, but that he is working with the inspector general's office to protect that whistleblower, which is required by law. I believe that the whistleblower and the inspector general have acted in good faith throughout. California Congressman Devin Nunes says the complaint hasn't been completely verified. One of the quotes they're going to use from you is you saying that this was a credible uh, complaint. That will be used and spun as you're saying that it was true. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Well, also this week, that whistleblower complaint led House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to say she is starting an impeachment inquiry. So where does Nevada's delegation stand? Nevada's lone Republican, Congressman Mark Amaday, does not support it, saying Democrats were making it an issue before Congress could investigate. Democrat Dina Titus was the first member of Nevada's congressional delegation to support impeachment back in July. And this week, Representatives Susie Lee and Stephen Horsford both joined her in support of the inquiry. It's very alarming. Uh, the president's request uh, of Ukraine uh, to intervene in the 22, 2020 election uh, in order to get dirt on a political rival uh, goes against his oath of office. Uh, the fact that he used the office of the presidency is uh, very alarming, and it's why um, I, along with many of my colleagues, have now called for a full uh, impeachment inquiry in order for us to get all of the necessary facts. So what does an impeachment inquiry mean? 8 News Now Good Day anchor John Langler asked Alexander Limon to break it down for us. Where do things go from here? It's certainly broader than what we saw this morning. There's a lot of moving pieces. Just kind of walk us through what the next steps are. Right, so while this whistleblower complaint and that phone call between the two world leaders uh, is at the center of this investigation, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other top Democrats have said uh, the impeachment inquiry is about a lot more than just that one issue. There are multiple investigations going on right now in the House of Representatives uh, that involve oversight over President Trump. For example, looking into whether the Trump organization is making money and profiting off of uh, 
President Trump being in office. So multiple investigations that could potentially lead to articles of impeachment being introduced in the House of Representatives. So these investigations into the president and the White House have been going on for, for some time on, on a lot of uh, parts of these issues. How does the uh, impeachment inquiry process move forward, and is there really any change to what happens on Capitol Hill for congressional lawmakers as they lean towards possible um, articles of impeachment? It appears that Democrats uh, think that this has reached a tipping point or a turning point. We may, uh, you know, hear from the whistleblower, but what happens? after an investigation wraps up. If Democrats find that there is evidence, evidence there to move forward with impeachment, then the House of Representatives would vote on articles of impeachment and they would need a simple majority, 218 votes, uh, to move forward with that. And if that happens, that's essentially like the legal equivalent of an indictment. And that indictment would be sent over to the U.S. Senate. And then the Senate would hold a trial of the President of the United States. And the Supreme Court Chief Justice would preside over that. And then the U.S. Senate would vote on whether to remove President Trump from office. And they would actually need a two thirds supermajority vote in order to do that. And that's a final decision if that were to happen. President Trump couldn't, you know, try to fight back in any sort of way. It is worth noting, though, that this has never happened in the history of the United States. For example, in the Clinton impeachment, the Senate did not vote to remove him from office. And in, pri in prior presidential uh, impeachment investigations, uh, other presidents have stepped down before it got to this point. It is a certainly high threshold. Uh, thank you very much for joining us from Washington, D.C. Alexander Limon, thank you for the time. Well, moving on to the presidential race, the latest Nevada poll from the Reno Gazette Journal and Suffolk University this week still had Joe Biden in the lead. Elizabeth Warren performed well at 19 percent, trailing Biden by just four percentage points. That's smaller than the poll's margin of error, by the way. Bernie Sanders came in at 14 percent, but he'd been ahead of Warren in most polls so far this year in Nevada. Everyone else had less than 5 percent, and 21 percent were undecided. Well, are you registered to vote? Now's the time you make sure you have a voice in the next election. Hector Mejia tells us about a drive that happened this week at UNLV for National Voter Registration Day. The big push here at UNLV is to reach young voters and make sure they are registered ahead of the upcoming 2020 election. These Valley students join a massive nationwide effort celebrating our democracy. National Voter Registration Day started back in 2012. The day's website estimates that each year, more than 10,000 volunteers mobilize across the country for this unofficial holiday. This campaign is very passionate driven. It's also one of the best things that any American could do is to have their voice, have their say, and also have their passions and beliefs into one single action. There are several ways to register. The most convenient is online if you have a Nevada-issued driver's license or ID. We've posted a link with useful information, such as registration locations, on 8newsnow.com. Last year, more than 800,000 voters registered during this campaign nationwide. Reporting from UNLV, Hector Mejia, 8 News Now. Well, Nevada has several new laws expanding who can vote and when they can vote. The state now has same-day registration, meaning you can register and vote all at the same time. A law will also create automatic voter registration at the DMV, called the Motor Voter Law, but that won't be in place until 2020. And more than 70,000 ex-convicts will be able to register and vote in the 2020 election thanks to a new law restoring their voting rights.